Good evening everybody and welcome to Fireside Chat this evening. I hope you're all well and for those of you who weren't able to join us on Drive then I'm going to be doing a roundup of what Karuna has been up to this week and obviously the highlight for this week was certainly seeing her as she has been a little bit of a, an elusive cat for the last couple of weeks. I think Patrick was the last one to see her and actually seeing her on my first day back was a real, real treat. So I will be also inviting Kat on to come and chat with me and, and ask, I'm going to be asking her how it's been going for the last couple of weeks while she's been with us. And if anybody would like to ask any questions to Kat or if anyone would like to ask any questions about Karula, then please send them through to funnelcontrol at safari.tv and we'll be able to ans answer them as we're sitting here around the campfire this evening. So just to give you a rundown on what Karula's been doing, and uh, obviously we, we're getting extremely excited about seeing the cubs. Now I for one really want to see those cubs. I've not seen leopard cubs before. I've had the privilege to see lion cubs before, uh, but never leopards. So I'm really hoping that we're going to be seeing them soon, as I'm sure a lot of you are as well. And obviously we're getting extremely excited. And it's getting to that stage where the cubs should be old enough for her to move them around uh, with them walking after her. And obviously she's still going to be moving den sites and maybe getting to a stage where the cubs may be coming out of the den to play. So we're really looking forward to actually uh, having that experience and, and being with them as much as possible. But obviously not encroaching on her uh, private life too much. And obviously if she doesn't want us to be there, then she will hide. She is a very intelligent cat. I have no doubt about it at all. If she doesn't want to be seen, she will not be seen. I can guarantee that. So all we're doing is just obviously increasing our, our possibilities of seeing her, uh, especially after it being raining on quite a lot of the morning drives. As soon as there is a break in that, then we go out and see if there's any tracks around, any sign of her, and obviously following up on where the guides may have seen her. Uh, again, just try and increase our chances of, of maybe trying to catch up with those cubs at some stage. Because they are probably over about a month and a half now, maybe even two months old now. So it is getting to that stage where they should be old enough that we should be able to see them. And as I say, that will be all down to her. So anybody that would like to keep up with the progress and what she's up to and where she is, then I have released uh, the map that's on the Ning website. I have put on a blog. And for those of you who would like to know where those blogs are that I'm trying to release daily, if not every couple of days or so, then I'm going to be placing them up uh, on Facebook. The link is on Facebook, but also on the Wild Earth website. So I'm trying to, going to try and tr keep up to date with her, sort of a news bulletin almost, and obviously on drives as much as possible as well. So if you would like to keep up with her, and obviously as soon as we do see those curbs, we'll try and bring that to you as much as possible. Now what I'm doing when I do go out, uh, or if Mark goes out or Patrick, we're going to be taking the little NX5 Sony camera that we used to take out on Jigger. We're going to take that with us. And if we do bump into her, then obviously we'll be able to try and film her and call in the vehicle. So at any time, if we are out during the day and we do see her, at any time we're going to be going live with her. So if you are close to the computer, maybe keep it on just in case we do manage to see her and go live with it. And I think it's extremely exciting. And as I was saying on Drive, there is so many exciting aspects. The fact that Misha and Induna are still here, she's got the cubs and they're getting to that age where she should move them around and that we're going to be able to see them. And as I say, we have seen Yambili Odan occasionally as well. So the family is still around and I think there may be a lot of interaction that we're really keen to try and capture as well. And obviously a new chapter in Karula's life. She is a fantastic mother. And I really hope at this stage we may get a boy and a girl we do know that there's two cubs. Texan and uh, Ephraim have also said to me that there is still two cubs there. I think Ephraim actually saw her a few days ago with the cubs. So to actually know that there's two cubs, we had two girls to begin with. That was the first litter from Karula. And she managed to get those through to adulthood. The girls have actually got cubs of their own now, which at some stage I'd love to go and see if I can find and see how they're doing. And obviously on the bush grapevine, we get a chance to hear and see where they have been at some stage. But also the boys as well, her second set of cubs, they're reaching maturity. They're two years old now, just over two years old. And as I say, the fact that it's still here is just really mind-blowing stuff. And as I say, to be part of it and to be able to bring it to you live every day. And obviously, if we're not able to do that, to try and bring you in different ways and means. That's what we've come up with. So we take the Sony NX5 out. And as I say, if I do see her, I'll take my stills camera out so I can get some pictures and share with you on the blog. Uh, any video that I do manage to catch in 2D 
while I'm waiting for the vehicle to come out, then that's obviously how we're going to work it. But it does mean if we do send the vehicle out, obviously the batteries aren't going to be in charge for as long. So that's why we have to take out the jigger, go and look for her and any other animals that are around, and then bring out the vehicle. We can't just send the vehicle out because otherwise the batteries will run down. And it does mean that we won't be able to have the drive uh, in the afternoon. But if, obviously if we do find her, then maybe uh, we'll have to look about substituting that for a drive. But we'll see how it goes, and if we are lucky enough to find her, then as I say, keep Wild Earth on, and uh, we'll try and let you know via Facebook and obviously via, via the website if we have found her and when we're going to go live with that. So that's the plan, and as I say, the blogs will be out, and any 2D footage that I get I'll place on the blogs as well, so that's where you can find all the information. I'll also post the link on Karula's fan page, so if you'd like to become a fan of Karula, if you're not already a fan, then definitely look her up on Facebook. She does have her own page, and all the information is going to be there. Any sightings of her as well, as and when they happen, will also be posting up there as we're on drive. So we can keep a track of her, and as I say, I think she's a fantastic lady, and I am very excited about what the prospect is going to be of seeing these curves. So keep your fingers crossed it's going to be soon. I really can't wait, believe me. So just to fill you in on what she has been up to, I first saw her at Twin Dams on Tuesday uh, on the 11th. That was my first drive back and everyone has said that it's been very quiet for the last two weeks. And we were lucky enough to find some rhino, but also Karula as well. So uh, we were able to catch up with her around Twin Dams. And something was telling me to go down towards Twin Dams. Um, we actually had a call through that one of the boys was up on Mvubu Road. And I think we were on Batalier Road at that stage. So it was, which way do we go? And uh, something was telling me, no, go down towards Twin Dam. So I thought, let's just quickly try, because we were fairly close. And then we would head up to Mvubu Road. Because at that stage, when the call came through, I think it was Texan that found him. I'm um, not too sure if it was Misha or Induna at that stage. But uh, he said, no, there's one of the boys, but he's moved into thick bush. So at that stage, I know what the bush is like at the moment. And the fact that we were quite far away... I felt, let's go and check out Twin Dams just in case, and then we can make our way up and see if there's any sign of him. And luckily for us, we found some impala, and they were standing quite upright, and they were all quite alert, and they were sort of giving off the alarm calls, and that's what said to me, okay, there's a leopard around. And sure enough, we followed where they were looking, and she starts walking around the corner, and uh, unfortunately, there was actually a vehicle there, and we have the two radio channels, so that's how I didn't realise he was still in the sighting of her, because he wasn't on our radio channel for Western Gowrie, so that's where that, that uh, uh, problem came in. But uh, as soon as we worked out that he was on the other channel, I could call him up and say, was it okay if we stay with her as well, which was perfectly fine. So she went about her business, she was terri ter territorial marking, and uh, she was also using the glands on the cheeks, just like your pet cat at home, when they decide that they like you, they rub themselves up against the leg, and that's actually their way of, of marking you as theirs. And that's exactly what she was doing on the trees, and obviously she walked through the drainage line, and uh, we thought we lost her, we thought she'd continued on, and uh, lo and behold, where we were sitting, she actually popped out of the bush, walked right next to us, and she actually walked down the side of the vehicle, and I'll be asking Kat if that was the first time she's ever seen Karula, so it'd be quite interesting to see if that was her first time. But she walked right down the side of the vehicle, around the back, and just continued on, marking a territory. And she was looking to hunt. Uh, she wasn't looking thin, but uh, she certainly looked like she could do with a meal at some stage. And she was obviously showing signs that she was wanting to hunt. So she was out and about and looking, and, and even her tail was twitching at stages, and that was showing that she had some interest. And again, we thought we would catch up with her in the Milwati as she continued on but uh, she actually crossed over the road and she actually looked like she was going to hunt on that side and again she didn't, she didn't come successful so she ended up crossing over onto Batelier Road through the drainage line again uh, where the hyenas had been denning and onto Niala Road south and that's where we lost her for the first time and uh, we, we pulled out to let the other guys have a chance at seeing her and then we rejoined her later on after seeing some rhino and at that stage she continued on uh, into the north and she just went west as if she was walking towards uh, towards the central drive so I don't know where she went from there but uh, it was great to see her and catch up with her and so the following day we didn't hear anything but when we were sitting here talking to everybody while it was raining we actually did hear the following day on the 13th that she was down by room 6 at Boyatella Lodge and uh, I did actually hear a squirrel at the back calling 
And when a squirrel's chirping, you don't know if it's uh, an aerial predator, a ground predator, or even a predator that lives in the trees, an arboreal predator. So I wasn't too sure, but I did hear a squirrel. And next thing we know, we heard that Karula was in the drainage line. So possibly she was out the back just here, where we're sitting now, maybe just into the drainage line. And maybe she was walking at the back here, where she brought the boys so many times. And I've actually heard the boys playing with a towel they stole from our washing line here. And they were playing with it in the drainage line, just out the back here, behind Mark's house is here, just in the drainage line here. And, and you can actually hear them running up and down and tearing this towel apart, but it was too dark to actually see them. So we do know the leopards do use this area and as I say having this, the squirrel shouting was obviously saying that she was there that day and the guys did see her, we didn't get a chance to see her or film her but um, I'm very glad that we heard that she was around and obviously she made her way towards where the den was and as I say I have had com confirmation from both Tex and, and Efron that she is denning at the back of Tamborti Dam but I don't know if she's there now she has been out and about and checking on Nyala Road South, as I say. And also, she was then seen by Sapiwe and Mark. Mark later on on the 13th in Sandy Patch. And Sapiwe was lucky enough to see a leopard on the way to work. With her being in Sandy Patch area, it's quite possible it was Karula, but I can't say for 100% sure. She said it was too quick a glimpse to see her, but she said she, the leopard was crouching in the, in the grass and uh, waited for the vehicle to drive by. So. So Piwe wasn't too sure either, but as I say, I'm thinking it possibly was her, and maybe she had a small kill in the area. But I couldn't find any sign that it was, uh, apart from a track, and that's when I could confirm 90, 99% that it was her from her track. But as I say, with it being very thick soil, um, it could possibly have been a bit distorted. But I'm pretty, pretty certain it was her, but not 100%. So that was the movements of Karula over the last week or so. And as I say, I'll be trying to keep you up to date as much as possible. And obviously, as soon as we hear that we're able to see the cubs, then uh, we'll certainly share that with everybody as soon as possible. So just uh, before I do invite Kat on to join me, if anybody would like, if anybody is still interested in buying the calendars, then uh, just to show you again, I'm just having them up for one more week. Uh, this is the large calendar, and you can see a nice picture there of Karula in all of her glory. She really is a beautiful lady. And as I say, I've got the first first pictures of her uh, on January, and I've, I've tried to have one page for every regular uh, character, if you like, on Safari TV on each page. So if anybody's still interested, <clears throat> all the money is going to be going towards sports equipment for the children of Dixie. Now, Dixie is our closest village to us, and... Everyone was asking me for pictures of the animals and if I was going to do a calendar. And for me, it just seemed the, the right thing to do to rather than keep the money, to rather give it to the children of Dixie. And we've actually sold about 178 calendars. So thank you very much to everybody who has bought them. But if anybody's still interested for those uh, late Christmas presents, then please do go to lulu.com and you'll be able to find there is two sizes. There's the large one, which I'm holding here, and there is the smaller one. <coughs> Excuse me, and there's no difference apart from the front and obviously the size, but all the pictures are the same once you get inside the calendar. But on the front, it's just a larger version, uh, or the full version of the the picture on the large calendar. So there's the two sizes, and once you go into lulu.com, then all you need to do is put my name in Tara Piri or Safari TV, and it will bring up these two calendars. And both the sizes, it doesn't matter which one you get the same amount of money will be donated to uh, the children of Dixie for the sports equipment. And I'm hoping next week to actually go and meet the teacher, see what it is that they'll benefit from equipment-wise, uh, sports equipment-wise, and then from there I'll be able to purchase the sports equipment and then I'll be giving it to the children. And we hope to film that so you won't miss out on the children actually receiving that sports equipment. So that's all to come. And as I say, hopefully I'm going to be making or starting the ball rolling next week by going to visit the teacher again. And I will be letting you know as and when I'm doing all that as well. But thanks again, everybody who, who did buy the calendars. And I'm sure the children are going to have very big smiley grins on their faces when we do get all that equipment to them. So if I can just ask Kat if you want to come in and uh, tell us how it's going. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. <coughs> My partner in crime again. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> So how, how have you been settling in? Have you been enjoying it so far? Yeah, I'm absolutely loving it. Like I said last time on Fireside Chat, uh, 
there's nowhere I would rather be right now. <laughs> and uh, no, I'm just loving every minute of it. Definitely <laughs> loving it. Now, was that the first time you met Carulo? Uh, when she walked around the back of the vehicle, or have you met her before? Um, I think I've had some brief encounters with her before, but it mm. was uh, when I was with you and we were following her in the drainage line and... Mm. Um, she came right past the vehicle yeah. uh, that uh, I actually got a, a really good sighting of her. So she really is a lovely leopard. She and, is. But she's quite small, hey? I was so is. amazed at how small she was the first time I met her. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she's, she's only, she only stands about this high off the ground, whereas some of the male leopards are standing this sort of height off the ground. So. Yeah, you can tell she's very, uh, she's slender, but she's, mm. she looks healthy. And, uh, you know, in comparison to some of the other male leopards that are around here, um, like Jordan is, uh, what's the full name? Yambili Jordan. Yambili Jordan, <laughs> a.k.a. Jordan, yeah. um, whose neck is just absolutely massive. Is, hey. she, you, can, you can definitely tell a difference in, in the sex when it, when it comes to sort of like the thickness of the neck and definitely. that sort of thing. But, yeah, she's, uh, she's not too elusive, which is nice. Um, and uh, it's nice to sort of be able to start learning her personality and her movements. Like, we're not seeing her every day, but uh, every couple of days, you know, it's mm. nice to sort of have that relationship with her where you sort of follow her movements and absolutely dying to see those cubs. Absolutely dying <laughs> yeah, to definitely. see them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to manage to keep the camera steady. I'm just going like, <laughs> to want to just cuddle one of them. But yeah, oh, no, yeah, I haven't uh, actually seen uh, leopard cubs myself. Um, like you were saying earlier, I've actually had the privilege of uh, being around lion cubs and I had that sighting um, I was oh, actually with the humors yeah. yeah I was actually with Seb at the time and uh, it was I think it was three male lioness uh, three lionesses not male lionesses <laughs> three lionesses um, and I think it was two cubs mm. and that was a wonderful sighting it really was we were able to stay there for about 20 minutes half an hour and uh Oh, the cubs were playing with the lionesses and I wasn't quite sure which one was actually its mother mm. but they all seemed to sort of all tuck in in this little scrap they were having and it's just a wonderful thing to to be able to view that sort of interaction and uh, that sort of sighting so close as well and to film it is just it's, it's brilliant yeah absolutely incredible now one of the other sightings I wanted to ask Kat about was uh, obviously the two males just before I went on leave, the Kojima boys, and uh, we'd obviously we'd been trying to look for them. And when we did find them, uh, we were able to first of all watch one of the males. Uh, he was actually eating grass, so I think his stomach mm. was a little bit upset. But the other male was sitting quite far into the bush, and once that male who was eating went went to join his brother. There was actually a gap for me to get between the trees and go and park there. Now, I know these boys, I've only met them twice, but I do know they're a little bit nervous around the vehicles. Mm. Now, the fact that they weren't even looking at me when I was starting to pull in on the other side of the bushes said to me they were very relaxed with us. The mm. fact that we've been there for a good 10, 15 minutes already, mm. and they were very relaxed. So, I pulled in a little bit closer than what I would like to have done, but unfortunately the bushes didn't allow me any space. So obviously to try and get a nice angle to get everybody to see them, because obviously we hadn't had a very nice sighting of them at that stage. But obviously they were nice and relaxed, and they were all they were just sleeping away. And then all of a sudden, that male that was eating the grass suddenly woke Freak up, out. and his eyes were like saucers. And, and obviously looking now, do you remember him looking right at you? No, I do. <laughs> I've got it on camera. I had a big screen of it. Uh, it was just, it was, uh, it absolutely just like penetrated you. It was just <laughs> completely. Uh, it was a very <laughs> intense moment, and. Uh, we were trying to figure out what had actually spooked him, well, that's but it. we actually never actually pinpointed the reason why. He just like got up and just sort of went straight behind his brother, didn't he? Yeah, um, obviously. Uh, he, the other one didn't even dumb. bat an eyelid. No, he, he didn't. It was just very him. chilled. But I mean, yeah. we were probably about seven, ten meters away from them, so we weren't like yeah. right on top of them. Um, but as I say, normally I would have probably have been about ten meters away. Mm. Um, 10, 15 metres away but as I say, just the way the bushes were and the fact that they were fairly relaxed uh, they weren't even looking at us when I first started pulling in said to me that they were relaxed they were happy with us being there mm. and as I say, they were both fast asleep they were, I mean, it was almost as if it, they were just in dreamland or, already and mm. it was just the fact that he just woke up so quickly and I still don't know I still need to watch that footage actually because yeah. I still don't know what it was because after a little while it looked like he was looking actually just past Behind you us. 
And I don't know if there was a movement in the bush that he picked up on, and that was possibly what made him alert. Maybe the sound of an elephant walking through the bush. I don't know if there was, but maybe it was that sound, and maybe that's what made him suddenly alert. Maybe, and as I say... Maybe he was, uh, you know, when you fall asleep too quickly and you wake up and you're like, whoa, what's going on? Could maybe be. he was dreaming. Yeah. yeah just, Have you ever oh, had that where you're falling? falling. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I can tell you for sure that lions definitely dream, and I've had a sighting <laughs> on my old reserve, and it was a big male, just like these boys. He was huge. And this was probably 2 o'clock in the morning. We were sitting with them. We had the lights off. And we were sat about the same distance, about 7, 10 metres from them. Mm. Uh, again, the way the bushes were, we, we had to uh, get that, that close. Um, so we were actually about the same distance. I was sitting there enjoying the African bush and the sounds of the bush. And all of a sudden, I just hear this, Arr! 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 Like, what on earth is that? The switch twitching. on the light. And you can actually see the paws twitching. <laughs> It was brilliant. So I can tell you for sure that lions do dream. So maybe that's what it was. Yeah, it maybe be. he just suddenly just woke up so quickly, <laughs> and the fact that we were there, he was kind of like, oh, didn't realise you were there. Yeah, it could but be. yeah, very very intense moment, but a wonderful moment as well. It really was a fantastic moment. I find it interesting that he was eating grass because, you know, with domestic dogs and cats, it's it's sometimes I know they're part of the cat family, and you know it's. It's interesting to see how they're very, very different, but also how certain characteristics actually uh, cross over to one another. Mm. Because I know I've had uh, dogs and cats in the past, and I know, sure indication, if they've got an upset stomach, start eating grass. Mm, exactly, and the fact so, that he was doing it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've seen them do it a couple of times, but uh, as I say, I've never seen a big male do it. But it was just nice to see the different personalities of the two boys as well, because obviously mm. him moving around the back of his brother in the time that, yeah. you know, there could have been a problem. Yeah. <laughs> he was going to the back of his brother for protection. Yeah, I know. The other <laughs> one was extremely chilled, wasn't he? It was yeah. just... I don't think he even really raised his head that much. Uh, he? he did to afterwards. After his brother moved around the back, he kind of looked as going... Well, was it you? What's your story? What, what, yeah, was What's it? Your story? And there was a split second of thought are we going to get this male charging at us? And there was just a look in his eye and then it faded. And I was actually, as some of you know, I sort of try and communicate with the cats and I was looking just past him and squinting my eyes as, you know, as, as a, a greeting to him and to actually calm him down. And he actually did. He actually squinted mm -hmm. his eyes and looked away. And that's obviously what you picked up on, the fact that he, he was looking away. Yeah. But there was that one split second after his brother moved, I thought, hmm, are we going to see some action here? Yeah. But uh, luckily, as uh, I was able to communicate with him and tell him, you know, everything was all right. Mm. And obviously just talking to them as well. I'm sure a lot of you have picked up on the fact that I talk to the animals. And they do obviously not understand exactly what you're saying, but Pick it's the way that tone. you say it. Exactly. And it does help uh, in situations where they're not too sure what's going on. Yeah. And obviously we, we do interact with them uh, to a certain degree. We try not to interfere in the lives, but occasionally we, obviously we, we are there and they do see us and they mm. do recognize us. And uh, as I say, if we can communicate with them and actually help them to understand, then they will remember that. And I'm pretty sure they remember from the first time that I met them that I actually did respect them and respected their distance. And I did back yeah. off when they told me to. And as I say, the fact that they were very relaxed when we approached them said to me that they were fine with us being there. Mm -hmm. Had I seen any indication they weren't happy, we would not have even a, a tried to go in and have a better view of them and I'm sure a lot of you do know that about me by now but uh, as I say to actually give you quite a <laughs> an adrenaline rush there yeah <laughs> to be honest like it wasn't necessarily at the time it was afterwards looking at that footage and that mm. just like <laughs> that penetrating gaze I was just like oh yeah. you don't it's cause you get else. so caught up in the moment and you know especially in behind camera you're working out shots and plotting where to go next with your shot so you know, it's a moment like that can sometimes, you know, even though you've captured it on camera, you don't necessarily, it doesn't, I just remember him sort of like getting a bit freaked out. And then I reviewed the footage and I was just like, whew. <laughs> yeah. And how are you finding the camera? Because obviously it's a big camera. It for is. those of you that don't know, I mean, the camera's camera. about this wide, so sometimes the camera person can't even see what's going on in front of them. Yeah, so they do rely quite heavily on us as well. Yeah, there are, um, it does come with its challenges, um, but you know, I'm definitely up for a challenge and I think it, my camera work is improving for sure. Well, definitely, in the two weeks I've been away, I've definitely seen a difference. Oh, thanks, definitely. Carl. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm being serious, No, definitely. I had a great, uh, a great um, drive with Mark last night. I was saying that, you know, it was one of the f uh, first times that I've really f oh. 
Sorry, I just yeah. got <laughs> I just felt something there. It was one of the first times that I felt like completely uh, at one with the camera and I was able to really concentrate on the creativity of the shot. Mm. Um, and I had that with the zebra and we got very, very lucky with the Ellie's last night as well. Yeah, um, I remember you actually saying sort of the analogy like when you're driving and it's, yeah, it's not it's thinking the about the car. gears. Yeah, exactly. You know, in a car, driving a manual car, you know, when you first learn, you're thinking about gears, you're thinking about clutch control and brakes and what, what, what. And, you know, once you get past that sort of infiltration of knowledge, and, you know, I'm not to say that I've completely finished that because I'm learning every day, um, but I can definitely feel a sort of fluidity now. Mm. Um, it's, it's getting a lot easier and uh, starting to enjoy it uh, a lot. Yeah, it's really awesome. great, and I, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, please bear with me if there are a few wobbles and... Uh, unfocused issues, mm. but um, I say I am it's, it's, it's a whole new piece of technology. Something you would never have been working on before. It so is, and it you, is have to, you have to you have to adhere to the elements as mm, well. So you do. It's, a, yeah, it's quite a challenge, really. One. But thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the fireside chat this evening. Thanks, Kat, for coming on again. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> and we'll see you again tomorrow morning at 5.30 Central Africa time for our next live safari. I'm going to be heading out and seeing if we can find those lines. I'll be listening out all night for any calling going on, too. So I hope you do around the dam. But for now, from myself and the rest of the crew here on Wild Earth, take care, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world. We'll Bye. see you again. Good night.